Hello, my name is Pastor Aaron Kangas, pastor at Faith Lutheran Church as well as Trinity Lutheran Church in Iuka. Today we are recording the divine service without, uh, without communion according to divine service setting 3 which is on page 184 of the uh, Lutheran service book and, um, and we will be using bulletins in the order for the fifth Sunday in Lent according to the one year series. I want to welcome each and every one of you who are watching. Of course, this is no replacement for meeting in person, but hopefully this is an opportunity to, uh, to give us a bit of a devotion in the meantime uh, so that people can participate uh, at home um, in terms of calling and response like we would at a regular worship service. And uh, just to let you all know, I am taking appointments for people in small groups less than 10 if we would like to have an abbreviated worship service that actually has uh, a true confession and absolution as well as the sacrament of the altar. Uh, the information for that is in the bulletins, so please come and pick those up at the churches if possible. Uh, right now I'm looking at Mondays and, uh, Mondays and Thursdays for I the Iuka congregation and Tuesdays for the Flora congregation. So. Those of you who are members of my congregation, uh, you know how to reach me, and so please do so, so we can schedule those. Okay, without further ado, we begin with the hymn 431, Not All the Blood of Beasts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Amen. We continue with the intro. It. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man, deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Send out your light, your truth. Let them leave me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And I will praise you with the lyre, O God my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Vindicate me, O God and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man deliver me, for you are the God in whom I take refuge. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Genesis, the 22nd chapter. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. And he said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place in which God had told him. On the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took into his hand the fire and the knife. So they both went to, so they both of them went together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. 
He said, Behold the fire and the wood. Where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they both of them went together. When they came to the place in which God had told them, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him was a ram, caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram, and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, The Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. You rescued me from my enemies. You delivered me from the man of violence. The epistle lesson is recorded in the ninth chapter of the letter to the Hebrews, beginning with the eleventh verse. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Therefore he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Greatly have they afflicted me from my youth, let Israel now say, Greatly have they afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed upon my back, they made long their furrows. The Lord is righteous, he has cut the cords of the wicked. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory be to thee. Jesus said to them, If God were your Father, you would love me, for I came from God, and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he said to me, Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. The Jews answered him, are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. 
Abraham died, as did the prophets, yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died, and the prophets died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say, He is our God. But you have not known Him. I know Him. If I were to say that I do not know Him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know Him, and I keep His word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day, and have you seen he, that he would see my day? He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our baptismal creed in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we sing hymn 433, Glory Be to Jesus, hymn 433.
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for the sermon today is from the Gospel lesson from John chapter 8, which we just heard. What is truth? That's the question that Pontius Pilate asked Jesus on Good Friday. And it is this question that is addressed within the Gospel of John and all of Scripture. And it is always a very important question for us to ask. What is truth? Why is that important to ask? Well, because it is a matter of eternal life or eternal death. In the Gospel lesson for this second last Sunday in Lent, Jesus says it very clearly. There is truth and there are lies. There is no in-between. Lies are the tool of the father of lies, the devil. And then what is the product and end result of these lies that he orchestrates but death and murder? Jesus said that the devil was a man-slayer, a murderer from the beginning. Why was that? Because the devil himself did not abide in the truth. And so now he only lies and twists the truth so that all may become like him. For the result of not abiding in the truth is death. It is the lies that murder. It is destruction. It is the way of selfish sin, which is slavery. There is only one way to be set free. And there is only one way to have life as opposed to that death. Jesus said earlier in John chapter 8, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And then in today's Gospel text he said, Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. For you see, it is the word of Jesus Christ that is the source of all truth and life and hope. Yet what do we see? Well, what do we hear constantly today? Well, in obscuring and the hiding of this word of truth, life, and hope in Jesus Christ. The devil is constantly causing confusion through the words and the whispers of false teachers, but then also of the media and the threat of death to ensnare and even lead away many from Christ, if possible. And so, in the news media, the consumer is constantly being bombarded with different stories as to the coronavirus. So much that we ask ourselves, what is truth? What are we to believe as far as the news? The coronavirus is worse than expected, it is not as bad as expected, there is a treatment, the treatments are not working. This will be over soon. Now this pandemic will go on for months and months. Therefore, give all power and authority to the government and cower in fear and terror. But what is truth? These can't all be true reports. They contradict each other. So which ones are the lies? Well, the problem is, that if any report, any teaching, biblical or otherwise, any opinion, if it is 99% correct but contains 1% falsehood, the whole is tainted, and it can no longer be called objective truth. You see, this is the way the devil works. The devil takes truth and he adds lies to it, claiming then that it is still the truth. Like I said earlier, this is his nature since his fall. He cannot abide the truth, and he also sees how easy it is to twist the truth to appeal to and then enslave humans. One of his biggest and best ways of doing it is that the devil convinces humans to define their own concept of truth for themselves according to their perceived needs or their whims. And so then this kind of truth basically is a combination of opinion and perceived fact. Fact, 
a mix of fact and fiction, truth and lie. As I said, lies lead to destruction. And our human nature is sinful, and it is destructive. And it is easily enslaved again to the lies of fear, hypocrisy, and standing outside the truth, even fleeing from the truth of God. The hard truth is that this pandemic is a judgment. It is a judgment against sin. It is a warning from God, an exhortation to get our spiritual houses in order. Now, even as at all times, we should repent. And instead of using this pandemic as an excuse to stay away from God's word, to stay away from the sacrament of the altar, we actually as Christians should desire it all the more. Instead of neglecting the giving of offerings to church, we should recognize that even this time is a ruse of the devil and a time of testing to see whether or not a congregation can weather the storm through stewardship and faithful giving. If a congregation cannot pay its bills and they cannot sustain a pastoral ministerial presence, well, the sheep will be even more vulnerable to the wolf. The truth is that this pandemic is laying bare the hearts of many as to whether or not they ever had faith in Jesus Christ, or if it was just for show, or to please others all along. Yes, it ultimately exposes whose children we are by our faith. So are we children of the Heavenly Father, who confidently abide in His Word, come what may, who yearn to be fed, who are repentant in the midst of their fear, recognizing their own weakness and need, confessing their sins, but then are made fearless by receiving the word and the sacrament in Jesus Christ? Or are we children of the father of lies? For he, the devil, affirms us in our spiritual laziness. He is the one who helps encourage us to claim to be too afraid to come to church in small groups to receive the medicine of immortality in word and sacrament, and yet we are not too afraid to go to Walmart, not only for groceries, but things we don't need, movies, games, things to clutter the home and distract our hearts and our minds. In every way, the devil uses pride, fear, and disorder to keep us in his line and away from Jesus Christ. So you have two sides. Jesus said either you are of the Father, your, de your Father the devil, and your will is to do your Father's desires, or whoever is of God hears the words of God. The heritage of those who abide in lives who do not abide in truth, who can take God's word or leave it, who don't care what truth really is except their own selfish truth, which is but of course another lie, stand to inherit mortal death, eternal judgment, fear in this life, and sorrow and regret in the age to come. The heritage for those who abide in the truth is life. Life now and life hereafter. Jesus promises that truly, truly I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And that is why Jesus also speaks of Abraham as having been alive to see his day. For our God is the God of the living, not of the dead. The law lays bare our sin. It exposes that we have given in to our sinful, selfish selves. 
We do not abide in the truth like we should, but we drink at the fountain of fear, lies, and delusions that the father of lies puts before our weak old men. And so we deserve every illness, sickness, and death. Though we deserve every and any judgment, God is merciful, and he has given his son, Jesus Christ, to beat back the lies of Satan. And so in times of uncertainty, of partial truths, of talking heads and contradiction, behold the truth which is always steadfast. Jesus Christ crucified for your sins. Jesus Christ is the true God, and he is true man. And he fulfilled the demands of the law, becoming the obedient son of man that we could not be. Yes, Jesus did not do this as an example of the piety and the perfection that humans could accomplish by their own effort. No, he did this so that he could provide the sacrifice. And as the sacrifice to stand and abide in the place of punishment and God's wrath for men and women and their sins, that is why he allowed himself to be sacrificed, so that by his blood all the trespasses of the old covenant and the law could be covered over by his blood. And so Jesus poured for me and you his lifeblood and for our pardon died. And now in his life, uh, now in that blood and crucifixion of Jesus Christ, we see the grace of God and the truth of God's love. By the death of his body and his rising again to life, believers know that like Abraham, we will never truly see death. God knows that here on earth, our flesh is still weak and heavy laden. He knows the burden of the devil's a constant lies in the culture of death that surrounds us, and that is constantly attacking you, me, and every believer, trying to drown out the voice of God's word, attempting to distract, mislead, scatter, and frighten at every turn. But that is why Jesus has appointed a place for gathering and strength, where he brings his very in-the-flesh reality. A place that is outside our own hearts and minds with all its warring voices. A place to hear his voice, to abide in his word, and to receive in the visible and the sacramental substance his true body and blood in the bread and the wine. And so, even now, he calls us out from our places of hiding, our places of sin places of our weariness, to show even now that we are not alone, that we are called to be gathered to him to confess our sins and receive the power of his crucified and raised body and blood. For the churchly body of Jesus Christ is visible in the gathering of his saints as we are built up, abiding and drinking from the fountain of truth and life in Jesus Christ. Satan, try as he may, cannot prevent us, even during threat of disease or persecution. The children of truth find a way to gather, not only through the wonderful technologies of video devotions as an emergency and temporary aid, but with their pastoring groups of two through ten, at least at this present time. We meet in the flesh. For the body of Jesus Christ is in the flesh. We receive the benefits of our Savior in his flesh. So that this frail flesh may no longer be afraid, afraid but free. Free to give thanks for forgiveness of sin, for the newness of life that is born within us by the Holy Spirit. Boldness to confess the faith that is given in Jesus Christ by our mouths and by our hearts and act. For he is the resurrection and the life. And then joined through Jesus Christ with countless other believers the world over from times past and yet to come, we behold the fact that even in a small group, our numbers are uncountable. So baptized into Jesus, 
called to believe the truth of God's love as his sons and daughters, redeemed from death and darkness. As we receive Christ's body and blood, our souls and these bodies are actually appointed for life eternal. Our bodies may rest in mortal death for a time, but for the sake of Jesus Christ crucified and raised, we, in our soul and spirit, shall go from life here to life with Jesus, to be joined by our bodies at the last day. That is the message of Easter, which is only two weeks away. And that is freedom from fear, even of death itself. Now this, of course, doesn't mean that we foolishly expose ourselves to plagues or feats of daring do as if we were challenging God, but we live in trust. And we see that as we trust, we abide in the Word of God and Jesus Christ. We see that we need that more than anything else. And so that becomes our priority, even during these times, or should everything else be well. So let us then use this time of self-quarantine, of shelter in place, or whatever your governor or county or whatever calls it, let us use this time to study God's Word in the YouTube videos, the devotional handouts uh, through KFUO, Lutheran Public Radio, issues, etc., whatever. Let us make sure that even as we receive these ways of being fed through the Internet, that we also make time to come together and receive the confirmation which our flesh also needs here in time, and Christ's real presence with our brothers and sisters, showing that we do not cower in fear for Jesus Christ's sake. So put all your burdens upon the Lord, and be freed in His truth and in all of His teaching. For this is our hope in Christ crucified, and we are victors victors in Him through Jesus Christ. Now, as I conclude this sermon, I conclude by reading the words of that favorite communion hymn that had been chosen to sing if we would have had the sacrament of the altar in our, in our regular congregational assembly this day. Now, I do this not to make us feel bad, but as a reminder of the comfort that we have had in Christ's communion fellowship in the past, but also as an encouragement to gather and receive that same victorious presence of Jesus Christ now and to life eternal forevermore. I come, O Savior, to thy table, for weak and weary is my soul. Thou, bread of life, alone art able to satisfy and make me whole. This feast is manna, wealth abounding unto the poor, to weak ones power, to angels joy, to hell confounding, and life for us in death's dark hour. Thy body given for me, O Savior, thy blood which thou for me didst shed, these are my life and strength forever. By them my hungry soul is fed. With thee, Lord, I am now united. I live in thee, and thou in me. No sorrow fills my soul delighted. It finds its only joy in thee. Who can condemn me now for surely? The Lord is nigh who justifies. No hell I fear, and thus securely. With Jesus I to heaven rise. Though death may threaten with disaster, cannot rob me of my cheer. For he who is of death the master, with aid and comfort, heir, that's ever, is near. And then the refrain, Lord, may thy body and thy blood be for my soul the highest good. God, keep you in that faith and strengthen you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now let us stand and sing together the offertory, Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from my presence, and take not thy Restore unto me the joy of thy 
short hymn, On My Heart and Print Thy Image, hymn 422. Trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, giver and perfecter of our faith, we thank and praise you for continuing among us the preaching of your gospel for our instruction and edification. Send your blessing upon the word which has been spoken to us, and by your Holy Spirit increase our saving knowledge of you, that day by day we may be strengthened in the divine truth and remain steadfast in your grace. Give us strength to fight the good fight and by faith to overcome all the temptations of Satan, the flesh, and the world, so that we may finally receive the salvation of our souls. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Continue on page 201. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 We conclude with hymn 544, O Love, How Deep. You may be seated. 